Hi everyone, my name is Brenda Rodriguez. I'm the farmer manager with Green Our Planet. And today we are here to talk about pest and disease control. So you might ask, what is a pest in a garden? Well, a pest is anything that is causing damage to your food crops. So how do we stop them? Well, the first thing we need to do is identify them and then we can determine how to control them. Are there any signs of them in your garden? You're gonna have to look closely. Are there leaves being eaten? Are there tunnels being dug in the soil? If you're not sure what's eating your vegetables, you can always contact your local cooperative extension or your Department of Agriculture. They'll be more than happy to help you identify what the pest is and what you can do to help control them. When it comes to insects, it's really helpful to understand how their bodies work. Insects are constructed differently than us. They have what's called an exoskeleton. That means their skeleton or their hard structures are on the outside. Our bones are on the inside. That helps hold us upright so that we can walk around and stay put together. The insect's skeleton is on the outside of their body. An exoskeleton offers protection for their body, kind of like armor, and it protects their vital organs. The other thing is they don't breathe like us. They don't breathe through their mouth. They actually have pores on the sides of their abdomen that they breathe through. So you know what that does. That frees up their mouth so they can eat. Sometimes we think that the best way to control pests in our garden is with chemicals. That's not necessarily a good choice, especially when it comes to food plants that we eat. So what can we do? Well, I'm here to share with you some of the ways that we help control pests in our gardens. Are you ready to learn all about it? One of the worst pests that we find in a vegetable garden, or any garden for that matter, is an aphid. Ugh, I think most gardeners would agree with me. How do they damage our plants? Well, they have a mouth like a drinking straw, and their mouth will go in and pierce the plant cell and suck all the life juice out. So how do we stop them from doing that? Well, they're kind of easy to control in the sense that they're soft-bodied, so I can gently smush them on the leaves of my plants, but they multiply really fast, faster than rabbits even. So how can I stop them? Well, I might want to try using a cup of soapy water and a popsicle stick or something, a tool, to scrape them off the leaves. The other thing that I can use is I can use a spray of insecticidal soap, or I can make my own. You can use your own spray bottle with water and about two tablespoons to a quarter cup of any dish soap. How does that work? Remember we talked about the breathing holes on the side of their abdomens? Well, the soap is sticky and it will clog their breathing holes so that they suffocate. The other way that we can control them, again, because they're soft bodied, is we can use a spray of 50% water and 50% alcohol. Alcohol will dehydrate them. It dries their bodies out because they're soft bodied. This works on caterpillars sometimes too. You can spray them and they'll dehydrate and dry up and their exoskeleton will crack. So we talked about aphids. Now let's talk about their farmers and that's ants. What is the relationship between ants and aphids? Well, aphids, when they drink the juice out of the plant, will kind of poop out sugar water and the ants love that sugar water. So they will herd the aphids, kind of like what we do with dairy cows, even to the point that in the winter time when the temperatures dip really low, they'll take them underground to protect them. And they'll also protect them fiercely while they're on the plant to avoid any other predators attacking them. 
Maybe we can help control the aphid population by controlling the ant population. So how can we do that and do it safely in the garden? Well, we like to use a product that you can find in your grocery store, and that's borax. What borax does is it dissolves the intestines of the ant. So they will pick up the food and take it home and feed it to all the rest of their family. What can you mix borax with that the ants would be interested in eating? We use many different concoctions and there's different families of ants. Some of them like sweet food, some of them like savory food, if you will, protein food. So you can try different methods, but things you can mix borax with would be honey, molasses, corn syrup, peanut butter, tuna juice, okay? Experiment around and find what works best for the ants that are living in your garden. What other kind of insects do we find in our garden? How about those creepy crawly caterpillars, okay? What can we do to help control them? They eat away at the leaves. One of my favorites to use is something called BT. BT is short for Bacillus thuringiensis. That's a big fancy word. Basically what it is, is it's a bacteria that when you spray it on the plant, the caterpillar will eat the plant, works on some beetles too, and then it will go inside and again, it will dissolve the linings of their stomach. Pretty effective. Another product that we like to use in the garden, diatomaceous earth, is very effective against beetles because beetles still have an exoskeleton, yes, but usually their abdominal underside is very soft. So, how does this work? This is really cool. Diatomaceous earth is ground up particles of diatoms, which are animals that live on the bottom of the ocean. So when you crush their bodies up, it's kind of like scattering broken glass. So when a soft bodied insect walks across diatomaceous earth, it will cut their abdomen up. It's kind of a gross way to go, but it works. Another fun way to help your garden is to release beneficial insects. It's really fun, not just for kids, but for grown-ups too. You can do releases of ladybugs, lace wings, praying mantises, all kinds of fun things. Do your research on the internet and find out what kind of good guys you can bring into your garden. One of my favorites to bring in is parasitic wasps. Those are really cool. And last but not least, one pest that we see is rodents. Mice, we get rats, we get rabbits. And sometimes these work. You can put up uh, plastic snakes, a plastic owl. They don't seem too afraid of them. Um, they're also tenacious because they want your goodies. So how can we stop them? One way is you can build a fence or an enclosure and you'll want to think about it and make sure that it's put in such a way that you can move it out of your way so you can still get in and work in your garden and harvest, but then put it back in place. There's also products out there that are designed to fill up their tunnels. We're experimenting with one product right now called Tunnel Plug, and we'll keep you posted on how well that works. Another thing that can be done is you can spray a deterrent spray um, I've seen mixes of peppermint oil, garlic, jalapeno chili peppers, anything that the rabbit or the rodent is like, ew, and they tend to avoid eating your plants. Somewhat effective, we're still trying to come up with the magic mix on that one. The other topic we want to talk about today is disease identification. It's a little trickier than identifying pests. What I recommend is that you invest in some really good books that help you identify pests and diseases in your garden. A lot of time pests can be the ones that are transporting the disease into your garden. The other thing I recommend is that you develop a strong relationship 
with your local Cooperative Extension and Department of Agriculture representatives. They are a great resource in your community. Thank you for joining us today in the garden. I'm Brenda Rodriguez with Green Our Planet, and we'll see you again soon.